Hey there, it's Millennial Nurse Mentor back with another video. Today's video is going to be about different travel nurse agencies and how to pick a travel nurse agency. There's lots of agencies out there. There's lots of ones that are good. There's lots of ones that are not so good. And there's pros and cons to all of them. And I figured just to sum everything up in the video because when I was looking on researching travel nurse agencies, there was literally probably a little to no information. So, I'm gonna have a bunch of stuff in the description box as well. But there's four criteria I look at when determining if a travel nurse agency is good or bad. And one of those is pay, housing, contracts, and then like the other criteria. So, to consider with pay for a travel nurse agency is how much you want to get paid. Typically, you want to take home to be at least 2000 a week because you get paid weekly with travel nursing. So to cover your expenses and costs and taxes, try to look at contracts that are minimum 2000 take home because lots of agencies will have 2000 3000 4000 gross but you want your net, your take home to be at least 2000 and that's pretty much based on taxes, stipends. In a travel nurse, a good travel nurse agency and recruiter will tell you what their typical take home is for nurses. Now, maybe there's a place you want to go that you would take home less. You kind of have to weigh your pros and cons for the other stuff that I'm going to mention later, but typically, take home 2000 at least. And with the pay, you want to know what's covering your pay. Is your housing, is your meals, is your incidentals, how much they take out for taxes. Do they take out anything with taxes? Do you have to duplicate, duplicate expenses, which that kind of goes into the, you really want to talk to an accountant, specifically one that specializes in travel nurses, because that's where you can get into a whole bunch of gray area and we're not trying to get in trouble with the IRS. <laughs> so, biggest thing is take home at least 2000 What all does your pay include? How much taxes do they take out? And you want to find you a good, a very, very good accountant that specializes and travel nurse. And also with the pay, you want to look at your benefits. Do you get benefits? Do you not get benefits? How much is benefits? How much do they take out if you do get benefits? Because most time with travel nursing, you don't get, you get paid based on your hourly, but it's usually the extra, the type of stuff where people will say that, and that's how most travel nurses make most of their money. It's through the stipends, not necessarily through their hourly rate. And there's like a base rate that the hospital gives that agency and the agency takes a portion of it and then the rest is your divide up in your taxable rate and your stipends and your non-taxable rate. And so I always ask my recruiters what's the base pay for that assignment because then if I see what the base pay is and what my taxable and non-taxable is, I see whether I'm getting ripped off or I'm not, whether they're taking my of money or whether they're not. So I always ask what your base pay is. Then with housing is another thing I look at, which goes into your stipend, your non-taxable money. How much do you offer for that or does your company provide housing in a, you know, extra in addition to the stipends. Some companies housing is included. They've like, in the sense that you don't have to pay extra with your stipends for housing. That's automatically covered from that travel nurse agency. Lots of crisis agencies and assignments have that. Most of them, you either get a portion of your pay taken out for their company housing or that portion of your pay is just given to you for you to find your own. 
depends on which you want to do, which way would costly benefit you. Never, ever, ever, ever sign a contract without reading it thoroughly and consulting with someone who reads contracts. It's better to have a lawyer when you sign contracts because there's lots of things in that contract that you may think is fine. There's lots of stuff in the contract that may come up with like, oh wait, I didn't know that, that like, floating. You can have your contract, you don't want to float. Sometimes they'll say in your contract, you are allowed to float. So you may get to assignment where you are a ER nurse and it may be a little call on your contract as you didn't necessarily say it says they allowed to float you to another unit. So you may get there even though you're an ER nurse and they may float you to a message or an ICU unit and it's like, well, you've always signed the contract. So you, once you sign the contract, it's understood that you understood everything else in that contract. Also, those giant travel nurse agency, will they let you put your contract block scheduling lots of them? will but there's a good amount that won't typically a travel nurse agency or recruiter that says they don't do black scheduling red flag red flag because that agency that recruiter that hospital needs you more than you need them so typically if they say they can't accommodate your block scheduling or any type of needs then red flag go somewhere else, there's plenty of hospitals, there's plenty of agencies, there's plenty of recruiters. Just make sure you get all that before you sign a contract. But pretty much anything that you ask for, they should be able to put in, in that contract and then have you and the hospital agree upon it. Basically the travel news agency and the recruiter is your middleman between you and the hospital. Okay, so getting into the specific travel news agencies now. There's like 50 plus travel nurse agencies. There's a bunch of travel nurse Facebook groups and there's one specific travel nurse website slash Facebook group called, I believe it's Gypsy Travel Nurse, I believe it's called. Don't come for me. I, I, I know that's a bad word. That's just what it's called. That's where most travel nurses use that website. Just, that's what it's called. I'm so sorry. Anyways, so they've ranked all the travel nurse agencies based on a little set of criteria to determine which one is better than the other. And that criteria is areas of agency relationship, assignment, location, employment, benefits, and career advancement. And based on that set of criteria is how they determine the top list. So the highest ranking based on this list is triage staffing, Jackson nurse professionals, and travel nurse across America. And then the second highest is fusion medical staffing, medical edge recruitment, and nomad health. Currently, I work with three to four travel nurse agencies. I work with IA, Jackson nurse professionals, cross country, and American mobile nursing. All for different reasons. I am because of the relationship I have with my recruiter. They actually genuinely care about me as a nurse and this person. Cross country because they had assignments at places I exclusively wanted to go to, and they have the only people that had assignments at that, those hospitals. American Mobile because of the more so the relationship with the agency and with the nurses, they very much care about the nurse versus themselves, at least with the experience I've had with the recruiters from there. And Jackson Nurse Professional because most of those positions from the Jackson Nurse Professional agencies are higher paying. And so hopefully this gave you a little insight on how to pick one. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. And hope to hear about your travel nurse endeavors. If you have any questions, like I said, drop a comment down below. I don't mind answering questions. I 
really enjoy it. So I will talk to y'all in another video. And this is Millie on this mentor. Sign off.